Okay, you heard it here first. Every golfer should have a club just like this in their bag in 2024. Introducing the Callaway AI Smoke Paradigm 7 Hybrid. You see, so many people have seven woods in the bag now, nine woods in the bag, Dustin Johnson, Matt Fitzpatrick, so many of the world's best players have a high lofted fairway wood in the bag. It's become a little bit of a game changer and you could say it's become a little bit of a craze, a little bit of a trend. The thing that I want you guys to do is skip ahead of the trend because if you would have said a couple of years ago that Victor Hovland, Matt Fitzpatrick, Dustin Johnson would have had a seven wood in the bag and used them quite a lot, you would have thought, what on earth are you talking about, James? They are for high handicap golfers. Well, I'm here to tell you this is going to be next. This is a seven hybrid. As you can see, it features 30 degrees of loft and an adjustable hosel. And I think this is gonna be the club that people start to use more and more moving forward. Why is that? Because a lot of people could hit a seven iron pretty well anyway. Seven irons aren't always the problem until they are the problem. Just like with the seven wood, hybrids weren't the problem until they were the problem. Five irons weren't the problem until they were the problem. Not so much for the world's best, but for us guys and you guys watching at home. So 30 degrees of loft, it's a tiny bit longer than a normal seven iron. There's not a lot of offset on here, which I think Callaway have done incredibly well with these. And I have played with this full set, so it goes right down to eight iron. And it, Callaway aren't the first brand to do this. Eleven Golf actually released a full set of hybrids, which my dad was using not so long ago. And he found them very, very forgiving. Very forgiving. Um, let's aim to the right and let's try and draw this one in just a touch. And making golf easier for yourself is something which everyone should be trying to do because if it's easier, it's more enjoyable and you're likely to stick at it. I mean, look at that. I've said aim to the right just in case it moved on the line, but it stayed bang straight and it's pitched on the green. And I haven't even thought about the golf swing there. Often when I'm playing golf, I, I have to think about swing thoughts. I have to think, right, James, where's your weight? Where are you taking the club back? Where is it at the top? Where's your wrist? and how can you come down? There's a lot going on there, and it makes it more difficult. It overcomplicates it. I'm well aware of that. But that shot, I mean, look at that. Didn't even think about it. Stayed out to the right of touch, but it's a greening regulation from 180 yards out here. And that's certainly one of the areas that I think people will help if they use these clubs. A little bit more distance, more accuracy, because obviously the key about the hybrid is that the weighting's moved back. So you can see that looking at this tailor-made, tailor-made. So you can see that looking at this AI Smoke HL Hybrid, the weighting's actually a little bit further forward. So it's always gonna have a little bit more CG back and lower because that is what these heads are designed to do. But the fact the weighting's a tiny bit further forward does help with versatility, with different shots that we're gonna play in today's video to show you why I think so many golfers should try these and at least have them in the bag. I got that the wrong way around. At least try them and potentially have them in the bag. The fact you can adjust them all as well. So if you've got a full set of these, it would be quite expensive. I'm not going to lie to you, but you could properly get these set up. So each club goes the perfect distance for you. How many people end up saying, coach, all my clubs go the same distance. It's so annoying. I can't differentiate them. I can't hit different distances. And that makes golf very difficult. The fact you can tweak these to within an inch of their lives just shows how versatile they can be. And again, it doesn't look horrifying down at the ball. If I said to you, I'm gonna put a seven hybrid in the bag, people would think, ugh, what's that? And it's not that deep, to be honest. It's just a club that goes a certain distance. And say if you have challenging par threes on your course, par fours that you really just can't get on with, check this out. I've even taken a divot, I've compressed it. That is, frighteningly good the feel wise you do lose out on feel it's obviously not going to feel like a forged seven iron wood or a forged six iron with the loft that's on these but there's actually more loft on this than a forgiving seven iron most seven irons are like 28 29 degrees this is 30 so it makes it easier to launch it higher you're not cheating with loft you're cheating with tech i want to give that a clean before i hit the next one because i don't want to scuff up the face Let's go again. That was down its throat a little bit. I'm going to get that mud off the ball because that's not going to help. And we're going to test these in a couple of different scenarios to see how good they are. I mean, that's frightening that I've gotten away with that. That was a terrible swing. 
terrible swing flag high to the right and that might have been with another club i'm not going to tell you what it would have been it's what we don't talk about it's the voldemort of golf shots <laughs> And I'm actually quite glad I've hit that one because I don't shy away from my bad shots on this channel. I, I kind of embrace them. And the one thing that I've always been taught in golf is it's not how good you're good. Everyone's good is good. It's how bad is your bad. Because if your bad's really bad, you're probably going to struggle on your off day. <laughs> if your bad is there to the right hand side of the green, just flag high you're probably going to be able to walk away with maybe a par if your short game's on point or worst case a bogey, which on a long par four is never going to be the end of the world. Unless you're one down on the last hole, the end of the match. And I wasn't going to include this in the video because really it's a little bit of a, a bonus shot, but realistically, if you do struggle, a club like this, maybe with a little bit more loft in it, I said 11 hybrids do make right down to pitching wedge, this can act as bounce. So we all know what bounce is on a wedge, it helps you not duff them, and this sole's that big, it could really help with these shots. The ball sat down, you're not feeling overly confident with it, it's obviously going to come off fiery because it's a hybrid, but the fact that it's a 30 degree lofted hybrid means really all you have to do is get that ball moving and you can see it works a lot better than potentially if you do really struggle with chip shots. You could play that over and over again, it's a shot you would have to practice work on and try and really hone your game that sat down awfully but i know that if i just nudge it i can really start getting that ball going exactly where i want it to and that took one practice shot I'm starting to think well i don't have it in the bag to be brutally honest 30 degree hybrid be ahead of the game not a follower unless you want to be a follower to here subscribe the button's somewhere down here okay so when we talk numbers with this seven hybrid what would you come to expect? 30 degrees, a nice shaft length of around an inch longer than a standard seven iron. Would you expect it to go, what? A standard seven iron for me is 165. Let's say this could be a 180 club. Hit like that. I've struck that terribly. Look how low it's gone. And it's carried 179 yards. This is why I say people need to try and make the game easier for themselves. Because that's about as bad a strike as I can put on a golf club and it still gets out there, it still gets up in the air. I've done it again. I've done it again, and it's gone even further. 183 carry, 200 yards total with a club that, what does it replace? Is it a club in its own right that goes in the bag? The seven wood doesn't always replace a club in people's bag. Often it's just a club that you have for a specific hole or even a specific shot on your golf course. That one's gone a bit left. It's still 181. More pilot error that than anything else. But again, the numbers are there. And I do quite enjoy testing clubs with mediocre golf swings because I feel like this is how they are supposed to be hit. And then that's a lovely golf swing. What's that one carrying? I feel like that's going to carry, and it has. It's carried exactly the same, 180 as opposed to 181. So not quite exactly the same as a really bad hit. And this is what I'm starting to come to terms with. Why are we making golf so hard for ourselves? Guys, the numbers are kind of speaking for themselves. Should we all have one of these in the bag? Look at that, 190 carry. Now the one thing I'd be tempted to do if I did invest the money in one of these clubs, and like I said, you don't have to go for the Callaway, you could go for something a little bit more budget, is invest yourself in a couple of lessons with this club because when people go for golf lessons, often they just go for a golf lesson and they go, right, I'm gonna work on my grip today, I'm gonna to work on my takeaway, I wanna be in this position at the top of the backswing. They don't go for a lesson with a club, learn how to use a club, learn how to hit specific shots with a club. That is something that's so useful on a golf course, you can have an arsenal of shots with one specific club. And if that specific club is probably the most forgiving club ever released, you're generally going to get away with it a little bit more. So learn how to hit a tee shot that might go 180 yards, because how often do you play a par three that's just over 300 yards? 180 yards wouldn't leave you that far in, 
the maths. Literally, that's, I'm going to try and talk you through the maths, but I don't need to. So a generic shot with this could go anywhere from 150, 160, even 140, but it's an easy shot to hit. I've hit that one bottomy out of the face and it's actually come out lower and I bet that one's nearly gone 200 because often when you miss strike this, it probably goes a little bit further. So off the tee, if you're struggling with driver, you're struggling with three wood, you've even tried a seven wood, you've tried following Rory McIlroy. Did they have one in? I don't know. Dustin Johnson, Victor Hovland, Matt Fitzpatrick, Chris Dennis with the seven wood. And even that's not working. So you go to the seven hybrid. Now you learn how to play a low one. You learn to get your weight a little bit further left, stand a little bit narrower and just get that angle of attack a little bit more downwards on it. Then you can start to play these. And you can see that actually, yes, it's a forgiving golf club, but it's still just that. It's still a golf club. It's still versatile. You can still play different shots with it. And the fact that now I can play different shots with this club that everyone should potentially be looking at in 2024 speaks volumes as to just how good these really are. And one of the areas this club might really help you out is somewhere like this. We are 200 yards out. Yes, I said 200 yards out, out of the rough. What we have to understand when we're in the rough a lot of the time is, yes, sometimes the rough slows the club down, it doesn't go as far and it's very, very difficult. Other times the rough slows, no. Other times the rough speeds the club up so it actually makes it a little bit easier to get the distance you want. And I dare say these are two of those occasions. One of them sat up a little bit, there's some moist grass behind the ball, so that's generally gonna give us a little bit of a flyer, look like the known terminology wise. But the fact that this leading edge is a little bit thicker on the hybrid also helps. If we, even if we don't get there, it makes it easier to hit this ball like I want to, and that might well get there, you know. Well, that has got there. That might go in. Chris has given us a thumbs up for that one. He's very, very impressed. Now, this one might be a little bit more difficult because it's sat down. This is where the leading edge of this club comes into play. The fact that it's a 30 degree hybrid means it has to have a little bit of a kind of thick leading edge. So can we gouge this out? It's going to be easier to hit than an iron and progress down there. Now that strike speaks volumes because I'm not after sexy golf shots, I'm after shots that work. And that's finished just on the front edge out of a terrible lie. And I'm starting to tick all the boxes as to why everybody should at least try one of these clubs.